And welcome everybody to another edition of Top Talk presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm the host of Top Talk, Jake Donnelly and the Tobs. Well, they're now two games above 500. They sit at 25 and 23 after a 7 to 1 victory last night against the Moorhead City Marlins. Ryan Mintier took the ball for the Mar uh, took the ball for the Tobs and just like his last start against the Fayetteville Swamp Dogs, he made it all the way into the eighth inning. But this start was even better. Eight innings, just one run, five hits, no walks. It's the second consecutive start that Mintier has not allowed a single walk, and he struck out three Marlins on the night. In the Tobbs offense, they did their part as well, as they scored three runs in the bottom of the first inning to really take a stranglehold on the game. Adam Pate, Doug T. Garden, Seth LaRue, Ben Schmucker all coming through in the inning, as did Collins Cuthrow with another RBI single. A run came home on an attempted uh, double steal from both Cuthrow and Schmucker. The throw from Chase Simmons, the catcher for the Moorhead City Marlins, went into left field. Schmucker scored the third run of the inning, and Cuthrow, who started the play at first base, tried to score on the errant throw from the left fielder, but was gunned down at home. The Tops, they did win the game 7-1, to one, but they had two guys thrown out at home in the game, and the reason that that didn't matter was because of Ryan Mintier, who retired the first 11 batters that he faced before allowing three consecutive singles in the top of the fourth inning, which made the score at that point a 3-1 to one game. But the Tobbs, they got that run right back in the bottom of the fourth inning on an RBI double by Drew Cole, his 11th double of the season, and his second time in the second time in as many nights that he came through with with an RBI double, the big one two nights ago against the Fayetteville Swamp Dogs, which turned a 3-2 eighth inning lead into a 4-2 eighth inning lead. So the Tobbs, they tacked on three more later in the game to push the score to 7-1. to Mentir pitched the eight innings of just the one run ball before handing the ball over to TJ Viracola. Mentir more than likely could have gone nine for the complete game victory, something the Tobbs have not had so far this summer, a nine inning complete game victory. but. He handed the ball over to Viracola, who allowed a couple of singles, but was able to strand runners at the corners, actually with one out, but then got a strikeout and a flyout to end the game and give the Tobbs the 7-1 to win. So the Tobbs really rounding into form here as they are heading into the playoffs, currently in the third playoff spot in the East Division of the Coastal Plain League. That's the first wild card spot, and they are just a bunch of games out in front. Really, two more games should secure things for the Tobbs first playoff berth since 2009, but of course they need those two victories and hopefully they'll get one tonight against the Fayetteville Swamp Dogs, their opponent in tonight's game, 7.05 start, gates opening at 6 o'clock. But when we come back on this edition of Tobbs Talk presented by Tom and Ferris on Greenlight Channel 2, we'll have head coach of the Tobbs, Justin Hay, who is in a very good mood after his team has now won two in a row. And welcome back, folks, to Top Talk, presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm Jake Donnelly, and with me right now is the head coach of the Tobbs, Justin Hay. Justin, another very good win for the Tobbs last night, a 7-1 to victory. Ryman Tier took the mound, and he just really mowed down the Marlins. What was he doing out on the mound that had him just so effective? Well, it's something we've been working on with him uh, throughout the course of the year. First pitch strikes and pitching with movement. Uh, you know, it's something that's really helped him as he's moved along. You know, uh, Sunday we had two great Hall of Famers inducted, Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin. And listen, watching the Hall of Fame induction and really listening to them, uh, and Leo Mazzoni talk about them, he talked about never talking about velocity and only about late movement. And to hear Maddox and Glavin talk about their changeup and their two seam, and Maddox talk about the last 15 feet not being able to see the baseball real well, and if I can make the pitch move right then, then it's even harder to hit, and velocity doesn't really come into play. And Ryan's got a good arm. Uh, he's got a he's got 90 miles an hour in his arm, and we've seen it at times when he's needed it. Um, but he needs to learn. He had to learn to pitch at 86, 85, and just spot up and use movement, uh, because good hitters can time anything if it's flat. Uh, so when you get movement, which is what he did last night, it becomes much harder to hit. Uh, and then you know his curveball and his changeup were working well last night. And then we saw a couple times him rear back and, and use the 90, 89, 88 mile an hour fastball on the inside part of the plate to keep him honest against all those left-handers. You know, they started a bunch of left-handers against him, uh, but he was able to use his two-seam run away, but the, the four-seam on the inside part of the plate every now and then was very effective for him. Just, I don't think he threw it for a strike all night, but it kept him conscious about the inside part of the plate. So, you know, if he continues to do that, he's going to be able to be very good for us. 
And he was a guy who really didn't throw a lot of pitches, even though he went eight innings of work. He had a chance to go out for the complete game, but you decided against it because, well, you haven't had to use the bullpen all that much. Is that what went into your decision to throw out Viracola for the night? Oh, definitely. You know, I told Ryan when he came off the mound, uh, good job. You deserve, you've earned the right to go back out for the ninth, but at this point in the season, uh, it's more important for me to get TJ an inning than it is for you to throw a complete game. And you know, Ryan understood that. He, he was very uh, appreciative of the fact that, you know, I was looking forward to the bullpen getting out there. He wanted to throw nine, which is something you want out of a pitcher, but uh, TJ hadn't been able to throw as much as I've wanted him to, uh, but that's a good thing, you know. So going into the playoffs and going into this last stretch, I'm going to need everybody kind of fresh. I don't want to get anybody sitting down in the bullpen getting rusty, so that was why. TJ got to go into the ninth. And it was really just an overall solid game by the Tobs. They scored uh, three runs in the bottom of the first inning to really just take a stranglehold of the game. But it was also a part of the team that we've, it's really been much maligned so far this summer, and that's the defense. But a couple of very nice plays the last two nights, including one last night by Matt Remblack, a deep play in the hole. How is he able to get to so many balls out there at short? I mean, Matt sees the ball well off the bat. And, um, you know, he, his reaction time is very good, and he's, he's a very quick player, uh, something he's shown all year. Uh, last night just happened to be a, a situation where, you know, he got to it, uh, made a great play. I actually got to see it on video uh, because a news reporter was there and got it on video. And it was, it was something uh, that was ESPN worthy. He, it was a, he laid out and got up and threw the guy out. I didn't, when he caught it, I, think, I didn't think he had any chance to throw the guy out. Uh, but he got up and, and threw the guy out. So that really saved us some momentum. Uh, and when your defense is playing well, it really translates to your offense. And right now, offense, defense, pitching, everything going well for the Tobs as they sit two games above 500. Justin Hay, pretty happy about that. And thank you for coming in this morning. Maybe not so happy about that part. But folks, when we come back right here on this edition of Tobs Hawk, we will have Connie Rem from New Hope Primary Care. Tonight's game is a Slugger's Kids Night presented by New Hope Primary Care. Top Sock is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back everybody to this edition of Top Sock presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. Tonight's game is a Slugger's Kids Club Night, which means it's sponsored by New Hope Primary Care. I'm Jake Donnelly and with me right now from New Hope Primary Care is Connie Rem. Connie, it's getting late into the summer and New Hope Primary Care, I know that you guys have a lot of things that you like to stay on top of and try to tell the kids out there. What's the number one thing that they should be aware of in the summer? Well, Jake, you know, children don't think about it, but we really have to start thinking early about skin cancer. So one thing we really would like for children to do or their parents to do for them is to put on at least a 30 SPF sunscreen. And as you and I were talking about earlier, you need to do that more than one time throughout the day because usually if you're outside, you're not just sitting outside. You're outside, you're in the pool, you're in the ocean, people are spraying you with a hose, something. Mm -hmm. So we need to just put that on before we go out, maybe 15 minutes beforehand, let it settle in, and then apply it every hour or so after you go outside into the, into the water. And I found out that it doesn't matter how many times that you do, in fact, <laughs> apply or reapply the sunscreen. If you miss the first time, things don't go so well. So make sure you get every part of your body there. So you want the kids outside, obviously. It's the Absolutely. summer. Things are terrific here in Wilson. But don't just sit around when you're outside. You also have to do stuff. No, absolutely, Jake. One of the things we always say to children is you need to get at least 30 minutes of activity every day. And we mean outside activity where your heart is beating a little faster than usual. It's really better. I know children love to play video games and they are fun. I understand that. But we really want you to go outside and be active. Play, if, if you enjoy a sport, if you enjoy baseball, play baseball, play kickball, jump rope, climb trees, but please be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Do all those kinds of things that you are going to remember when you grow up doing. They're fun. You and I talked about reading beforehand. I remember climbing a tree and reading books when I was a child. And it's one of my fondest childhood memories. And that's what we want children to do as well. And we want them to learn, talking about water, we would really like for them to learn how to swim. Jake, I mean, not only is it a safety issue, but swimming is one of those activities that you can do that is fun and it gets your heart rate going. 
and you can do it in Wilson especially, you can do it in the winter since we have a bubble over the city pool. So you can, that's a lifelong sport and, and nothing better than a lifelong sport for anybody. Yeah, and you can see people two years, three years of age and people that are 90, 93 years of age exactly. going and swimming. And it really is never too late to start. I actually saw uh, an article a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. on ESPN, a forward for the Boston Celtics, a guy by the name of Brandon Bass, who is a full grown man, NBA player, was learning how to swim. And there's this picture of a six foot seven, six foot eight guy, <laughs> 240 pounds. And he has swimmies on goggles and little infants just right Right around him. What a great story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are like, oh, so he's taking care of the children? No, no, that is actually, he uh -huh. is learning how to swim. Great. You mentioned going up into trees, and you kind of, you had that quick point of saying, make sure you be careful. Yes. Did you have any troubles, or did any of your children have trouble growing up, climbing through and on trees? I'm going to say this out loud and hope that it doesn't come back to bite me. <laughs> no, I, I have never broken a bone falling out of a tree and nor have any of my children. Mm -hmm. But I just want people to be careful. I, I love for children to go outside and just be outside and, and just engage in an activity that makes you happy, keeps you active. But I do want them to always be careful going back to swimming. I, we all want you to enjoy the water, but do so safely. Be respectful of the power of water be respectful of the power of falling out of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity has a tremendous pull <laughs> on right. pretty much everything I have ever seen. <laughs> That's right. All right. So remember kids, try to get that 30 minutes of activity in the summer and also what, a good 30 minutes of reading? Got to get that mental Absolutely. sweat along with the physical one? Absolutely. All right. Well, Connie, thank you so much for coming in here this morning. And remember everybody, tonight's game is a Sluggers Kids Club night against the Fayetteville Swamp Dogs presented by New Hope Primary Care. And after this next break, we will have Michael Mott from Two Men and a Truck. All that and more on this edition of Top Sock, presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back everybody to Top Sock, presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm Jake Donnelly and joining me right now from Two Men and a Truck Moving Company is Michael Mott. Michael, what is it that you do with the moving company? I am the operations specialist. I do the hiring, training, scheduling, uh, phone estimates, so on and so forth. A lot of truck maintenance and stuff like that. And I hear so many great things about two men and a truck, including our producer, Dave Bumgarner. He actually had to use you, you guys. What makes you guys so popular, especially here in Wilson? Um, our goal is to not only meet our customers' needs, but exceed them. Uh, so anything that we can do to try to help the customer out, uh, especially on move day, uh, we try to go that extra length. And you guys aren't located just here in Wilson. How many locations do you, in fact, have? There are over 280 franchises located across the U.S. Okay, so no matter where I am, and I'm a guy that has to move pretty much every four months, if I didn't have my own really big truck to move mm. stuff, I could just call up two men in a truck? Oh yeah, we're, we're everywhere. We're in 48 of the 52 states. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay, you guys have some serious coverage then within the United States, and you actually started, and you know the company really from the ground up, don't you? Yes, yes. I started out on the trucks and I've kind of worked myself through the ranks and uh, moved on up into an entry level management position. Okay, but you, while being in that entry uh, level management position, you still do get out and go back to your roots. Oh, most sometimes. definitely, most definitely. Whenever people need a hand, I try to, uh, you know, put myself out there and, and, you know, put my expertise out in the field. And now, I've actually had to move a bunch of times, like I mentioned, but sometimes it really doesn't go that well because I kind of call up a company and then they call another company. Do you guys do that, or where do you guys get all your uh, business from, your employees? Mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, I do the hiring and training. Mm -hmm. um, all of our movers are professional movers. Uh, they go through an extensive training process, um, a lot of which is on the job. Um, but we don't hire any day laborers or temp workers, so any, anybody that comes out to the job is working exclusively for us. Okay, so really if I call up two men and a truck, I am getting two men and a truck employees? Not, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely two men and a truck employees, but mm -hmm. you can you know, get a variation of three men and a truck. Four guys, two <laughs> trucks. It's all in what you need. So really, if I have any type of job, you guys are capable of doing that? Apartment, big most house? Definitely, most definitely. Uh, no, nothing's too large or too small for us. Uh, we move single items uh, up to, you know, 10 bedroom houses. And what is your favorite type of move? Um, big was, house, small I would, house? I would say uh, apartment moves. I can, I can, me personally, I can get about three to four apartments done in one day. 
Wow, so you really do know how to put in all the work. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely, it's the best cardio in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, hey, and when your job is a workout, that's really the best oh, way to go, definitely. isn't it? It's, it's kept me in shape for the past 12 years. All right, well, working for Two Men in Truck and for over a decade, Michael, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Not really do appreciate it. All right, folks, when we come back, we will have starter for the Wilson Tobbs, Ryan Mateer, on this edition of Tobbs Talk, presented by Thomas and Ferris, right here on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back, everybody, to Top Sock, presented by Thomas and Ferris, right here on Greenlight Channel 2. I'm Jake Donnelly, and with me right now is a very sleepy Ryan Mentier. Ryan, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Now, you have pitched absolutely terrifically your last three starts. Last two starts, you've made it into the eighth inning. Last night, eight innings of one-run ball. When you're out there and really just mowing down the opposing team, is there anything that's really going through your head, or you're just kind of nodding to yourself, like, I, I can do this? Yeah, just nodding to myself saying I can do this pretty mm -hmm. much. And you had a couple of opportunities, three strikeouts in last night's game, including one of Nick Lombardi on probably the slowest breaking ball I have seen so far this summer. What made you decide to really take off a lot of the velo on the breaking pitch? Um, I decided to take off a lot of the velo because um, I saw he was getting catching up to my fastball. So, And I threw him a changeup, which he also fouled off. and So I went with a slower breaking ball to see if he, I fooled him. I did. So. And is that something that you discuss with the catcher, Matt Rubino, or is that just a personal decision? Personal decision. Yeah, okay. And really, you go the eight innings. You allow just the five hits, one run. You had a perfect game going. You retired the first 11 guys before another down the first baseline. Is there any reaction from you out on the mound when you give up that first hit, that first base runner, especially on kind of a dinker down the line? Uh, I mean, it happens. It's the game. so. And you're always aware. Were you aware that you had really just kind of blown through the first 11 batters? Not really. It was all pretty much kind of a blur. It went, so, went by pretty quickly. Yeah, a lot of ground balls. Ryan has a very good two-seam fastball. It kind of darts down and out of the zone. As I mentioned, it's the second time in the last two starts that he's made it into the eighth inning. And this time, you'd only thrown 80 pitches through mm -hmm. eight innings. Did you want to go back out there for the ninth? Uh, yeah, I did. I did, but uh, Coach Hay also told me that um, he needed a couple guys to get more innings on the team, so I said, all right, that's fine. So really doing everything for the team in last night's 7-1 uh, to one victory over the Moorhead City Marlins. Now, a little bit lighter question. What's your favorite thing about playing for the Tobs? Uh, the favorite thing about playing for the Tobs would be to meet all the new guys from all the different schools and hang out with them, become friends with them, and pretty much friends that you can you know, have for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's a really good thing. And uh, we actually have Michael Mott of Two Men in a Truck coming on later. And you folks will see, or actually Michael Mott was on right before this break. And you will see that Mott has pretty good facial hair. Now, you yourself had some pretty nice facial hair earlier in the season. Well, what makes you decide on one look or another? Uh, mainly, I just go for the pure fact of intimidation. <laughs> Ryan had like a Fu Manchu kind of thing with a little yeah. bit of salt. It was just a really yeah. good look earlier in the season. So the intimidation factor working out last couple of starts for Ryan Mentier. When we come back on this edition of Top Sock, we'll wrap things up. Top Sock is presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Greenlight Channel 2. And welcome back, everybody, to Top Sock, the only televised pregame show here in the Coastal Plain League. And it's probably a good thing that the Moorhead City Marlins that they don't have a televised pregame show because, well, Kenny Ayers, the better broadcaster than me for the Moorhead City Marlins, he'd have to sit here and think about what he could talk about that the Marlins did well last night. And now that I think of it, um, really not much at all, as they lost 7-1 to to your Wilson Tobbs. They only committed four errors. And, oh, it took them to the fourth inning to get a single base runner. But they did, just after the fourth inning, get two more hits. And that actually wasn't even off of the starter. That was off of the reliever. And they had guys on first and third with one out in the ninth inning looking for a moral victory. But they didn't even have that as Veracola struck out a guy and then got a fly out to end the game of 7-1 to victory for the Wilson Tops. Remember, tonight's game against the Fayetteville Swamp Dogs is a 7:05 start with gates opening at 6 o'clock. It's a Slugger's Kids Night presented by New Hope Primary Care. We also have another sponsor, and that is Two Men and a Truck, the moving company, which Michael Mott, you saw him earlier on this edition of Top Stock. He is the representative for Two Men and a Truck, which is a terrific moving company. They're located in Greenville. That's the closest location to Wilson. But if you are moving to anywhere, really, in the continental United States, they have 48 states covered out of the 50 states here in the good U.S. of A. 
I'd also like to say thank you to Ryan Mentir, who I think, as you folks saw, was just a little bit more than sleepy for this morning's edition of Top Talk. Of course, a, another thanks goes out to the head coach of the Tops, Justin Hay, and from New Hope Primary Care, Connie Rem. Thank you to all of you who came in this morning. Remember, folks, tonight's game against the Fayetteville Swamp Dogs, a 7.05 start with gates opening at 6 o'clock. This is Jake Donnelly saying thank you for tuning in to Top Talk, presented by Thomas and Ferris right here on Dreamlight Channel 2. I hope to see you all at Fleming, and Marlins, we'll see you on Twitter.